Asian robot companies is the topic of today's presentation, and it's a follow-up on a last piece we did trying to look for the best robot stock. So the focus today is going to be to give you a peek into how we actually do our research, some of the methods and tools that we use. So let's start by talking about thematic ETFs. So what these are useful for, especially in quite mature themes, is that you can get a universe of stocks that somebody else has put together, presumably experts in the field, and then you can vet that list and find interesting stocks to invest in. So you can see here where we've talked about robotics ETFs before. We wrote about um, which of the robotics ETFs would be the best to buy, and typically that would be the largest. So here we've pulled up a list of the uh, most recent robotics ETFs available. You can see there at the top are bots and robo, each having uh, a, over a billion dollars in assets under management. That's quite good. And um, looking further at different metrics, we can see that they're quite different. So bots has 44 constituents and 67% of the weighting of that ETF is the top 10. Now, when you look at Robo, you can see, well, they have 82 robot companies, or um, you can't necessarily call them robot companies because these ETFs often get quite creative on the names that they throw in there. And we've looked at that across multiple themes where an IoT ETF may not be what it says on the tin. So uh, they have 82. That's quite a lot more. And the top 10 for Robo make up just 18% of the weighting. So you see bots is a lot more concentrated. Now, ER on the right there, upper right, that stands for expense ratio. You could see robo is quite expensive. So thematic ETFs, I can't recall what ARC's charging, but uh, an active thematic ETF uh, shouldn't be upwards of, let's say, 60 basis points, right? So your average ETF, I think, is around 30 basis points. Robo would be considered rich. When we look at performance, certainly you're not getting the performance that you're paying for here. So, uh, you know, it's always difficult to look at performance over short time frames. Probably you should never look at anything less than five years. But we have five-year performance numbers for these two ETFs. We can see that Robo returned 25% over the past five years bots uh, lost 2%. Both those numbers are compared to a NASDAQ return of 75% over the past five years. So you'd have done a whole lot better just by investing in the NASDAQ and you have taken on a lot less risk. And that's not even considering the uh, hefty expense ratios that are charged by these ETF providers. So the dramatic difference that you see there between the minus 2% and the 25%, that just has to do with the number of holdings and uh, the concentration, as we talked about before. Now, what we did with those two ETFs and another one, we took the First Trust ETF as well. There are major ETF providers. So we, we said this, what names of stocks can all three providers agree upon? So you can see here from this Venn diagram that they're, they're really choosing a lot of different names, but for all three providers to agree on a single name, it's pretty likely that that has some robotics exposure. That means that three independent experts went and looked at the field and said, well, these are companies that you ought to be interested in. So those 18 names we're particularly interested in. So we actually just did the combined names between bots and robo and it's 19 so just a little bit of a difference there and that's what we're looking at right now however in the previous presentation that we did on the best robot stocks we took a different approach what we did is we took the the total number of stocks between the two biggest etfs and then we deduped that list we removed all the duplicates we were left with 104 names then what we did is we removed all names that we had already covered, and then we were left with 75 stocks. So that's where we left the last presentation where we looked at best robot stocks. And in this list, you're going to find a lot of Asian robot companies, and that's what we want to look at today. So I pulled out of the list of 75 all the Asian robot companies that you can see here, and we're just going to look at China, Korea, and Taiwan. That's because... The method that we're going to use that you'll see here in a second doesn't work so well for Japan for whatever reason. So 
We're just going to do these three countries, the four Chinese robot companies, three Korean robot companies, five Taiwanese robot companies. First thing we're going to do is we're going to extract the ticker symbols. So what we've done here is we've taken this data just comes right from the CSV files from both ETF providers. So you can pull it into Excel. Now you're manipulating it. And what we want to do is we want to take the numbers from the field on the right. So if you look at the table on top there, you can see you've got the company name. Then you've got a function that says equal left D2 comma 6. Well, D2 happens to be the cell on the right there. And we're simply taking the left six characters. Okay. And then we go all the way down. We do that for each one of those. And when we get to the AirTac International Group uh, stock, we just want to, or the ticker there, we just want to pull four characters. So you see how the, the function changes. We pull the four characters. And what we get are the uh, numbers below without the letters. So it's quite quick and easy way to filter those out. Then what we can do is first you have to copy and paste them. Otherwise, the system gets angry because it sees the functions, not the value. So you copy, paste those in there. Then in Excel, you click that stocks button. So first click the data tab, then click stocks with all those selected. Super cool. Look what happens. It resolves every single one of those company names. Now what you can do is you can start to play around with importing data quite easily. And I left in the company names on the left so you can kind of check and make sure that, in fact, it imported the right company. Sometimes it'll make a mistake, so you want to pay attention to that. So now that we've got these companies resolved, what we can do is start to pull in data like market cap. And of course, since we're dealing with foreign firms, we also want currency. So you just pull in market cap there. You select the company name and you choose market cap and then you choose currency. And this is what you get. Now, they're all registering in yen initially when you pull in that market cap. So you want to see what currency it's actually using before you go and, and change that to USD. So you want a common, you know, common currency across all those. So um, you use the currency function here. You can see CNY, KRW, Taiwan's dollar there. So we know now what exchange rates we need to get. We bring those exchange rates in, we multiply them out, and look, we have our market cap USD for all these companies. All right, now what we can do is we can start to eliminate anything that's too small. Well, it just so happens to be the three Korean firms on this list are just too small for us to consider. We took a cursory look at these, and they're not very interesting names. So that leaves us then with nine names. Now, this is where things start to get rather interesting. What you can do now is you can choose the description uh, function for uh, that, that data import, right? So in the same way, if we go back and look at the slide where the different values that we can select, you see description there. Well, when you choose description, then you can pull in a description. What we've done here is simply trimmed these out and highlighted things of interest. So we could just go down the list. You have hands laser technology. It says they mainly operate in domestic markets. Not so interesting. We're looking for companies that um, have bigger aspirations than just selling dom uh, domestically. You see iFly Tech primarily engaged in software and IT service business. Not so interesting. Eston Automation. This is a company that's probably worth looking at. We're going to talk a little bit more about why in a second. This next firm here, Shenzhen Innovance Technology. It, despite what the description here says, what they do, it appears to be an industrial uh, components firm, uh, what you might classify in, in, as a sector industrials. But what they actually do is provide motion control equipment for robotics, and they're they're a leader, perhaps not the leader, but a leader in what they do. And we came across a very, very rich institutional investor report that uh, perhaps shouldn't have been made available. It appears somebody in recruiting made that available to the public, and it's sitting out there. And it's very rich. Let's say it's 100 pages long. And you can tell this took a team of analysts months to put together. Uh, it's really, when you read it, it's... it's um, analysis paralysis. There's just too much information, but it's certainly useful to look at. And uh, we wouldn't have been able to 
uh, detect that Shenzhen was uh, actively dabbling in, or, or at least providing some exposure to robotics without having this report point that out. I mean, you can figure that out yourself. But again, it, these individuals took a long time to go through this data. So that's a firm that might be worth looking at. It's also one of the bigger ones, over $20 billion market cap. Then you have AirTech here, mainly engaged in manufacturing and sales of pneumatic equipment, so potentially uh, something to do with robotics, but we're really interested in industrial robotics, more pure play exposure to robotics. Then you have this next firm, High Wind Technologies. They're doing a, a, a number of different things, one being industrial robots. So what you need to do there is then to start digging into their collateral. And since these are Asian robotics companies, a lot of times they won't necessarily put their financials in English in a way that makes any sense. So it becomes very difficult to figure out what they're actually doing. And that's where these analysts, you know, half of who probably who speak Mandarin can go and figure out exactly what these firms do. Then you have Delta Electronics. It says their automation segment provides industrial automation, etc., uh, whereas the first sentence, they're primarily engaged in the manufacture and sales of power supplies and components. Again, you're trying to figure out the, how much pure play exposure you're getting. You have Advantech there. Company's main products include embedded boards and systems, industrial computers, industrial control products. So again, um, more in, in, in industrials as opposed to providing robotics pure play. And then this last one is uh, appears to be uh, a semiconductor industry exposure. When you're looking at investing in robotics, at least from our perspective, you don't want you want something that's industry agnostic. So, uh, just going back to Eston Automation, uh, these comments were taken from some analyst over at Morningstar. They're very edifying. It's the largest and uh, and only domestic industrial robot manufacturer in the top five in China. And by that, we uh, seem to think that says that. Of the top five, and we have a very good idea of, of who those companies are, one of them would be Eston Automation, so we know who the other four are. So that's interesting. Uh, they focus on emerging industries with big growth potential, such as photovoltaics and lithium-ion batteries. That's very interesting. And this sentence here, one of the largest industrial robot suppliers to the photovoltaics industry. Wow. So that's quite interesting to know, and it also says here they've uh, landed their robots in the factories of top lithium-ion battery companies such as BYD and Cattle. So a way to play both photovoltaics and lithium battery growth and ro industrial robotics. Very compelling. And uh, we actually did a piece, this was back in 2018, looking at Eston, and I've put uh, that up here. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video so you can read that, and we talked a little bit about the firm. Uh, in terms of investing in that, we're looking more right now at the leaders. And this article you see are a list of 14 promising robotics companies. That's for paying subscribers. That's where we started to dig into that, that list that we pointed out earlier in the Venn diagram, the 18. Well, it's actually 19. We started digging into that, and we did that in that article, and we're going to take a different direction. Whereas if you were interested in Eston, what you could then do is try to access it using interactive brokers and their Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect feature. I actually signed up for that and it didn't go through. It's rather complicated and I will uh, certainly follow up on that because it's very interesting. I don't think that's a firm that we'll be investing in, but certainly that's um, that's interesting also because you can access the A share, so you lose that VI structure risk that we always talk about. But um, just to conclude here, ETFs provide a great universe of possible suspects, and that's what we've done today is really use those ETFs, which we wouldn't invest in for uh, exposure, as we pointed out, uh, for a number of reasons. But they're useful in showing us what the universe looks like. And then what we can do is use Excel as a tool for manipulating data, particularly for foreign firms, where some of that information is very hard to come by. You saw how we were able to pull that in quite easily. Uh, foreign stocks offer a lot of variety, but the problem you'll run into that we run into is that language barrier. That's why you have these firms that produce institutional research of the, of the type that we talked about, where we came across a very rich report. Those individuals all have the... Um, language skills needed to analyze these Asian robot companies. So um, I'm going to put up a 
piece here, a video that we did, the last one we did on finding the best robotics companies. Before you watch that, please click the Analyze logo here. Support us. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch this today.